Whoa, this is an age-old debate that's been going on for years. So I'll throw in my two cents. Hey, there it is. Two, yeah. Keep in mind, I'm very biased too. So if you're a browsing filmmaker trying to figure out which editing program is best for you, you might not get that much help from me. But obviously, your time, you could feel free to watch. It helps me out a lot. The key thing to remember about both of these programs is that they're very different. They cater to different markets. So there's not a very easy, this is the right way to go, this is the wrong way to go. That's why there's so many videos covering this topic is because it's not an easy answer. But because I like to keep this channel biased and I hate saying the word, it depends on your preference. I'm gonna to give you an answer by the end. I like to be very decisive. I used Final Cut Pro 10 a long, long time ago, maybe four to five years. And because it didn't do a lot of the things I wanted to do in my filmmaking career, I switched to the Adobe Suite, which is not just Adobe Premiere, that's After Effects, Photoshop, Audition, Lightroom, and Media Encoder, this giant suite of apps that you pay a monthly fee for, and you get access to all of their apps that do lots of various things, and they work very, very well together. Adobe does a great job at implementing applications, features to work together. In my instance, it's mostly Premiere and After Effects. They just work hand in hand. And back in the day, I used to edit all my videos on a custom-built PC, believe it or not. And all the Adobe apps both work on Mac and PC, so they're interchangeable, which is handy for a lot of people who are using different computers throughout the day or have many people working on the same project. If you're using the Adobe apps, you're not limited to just Macs or just Windows. And my custom-built PC had an NVIDIA graphics card, which Adobe takes full advantage of. And what Adobe is all about is unlimited options that I still have never Never even come close to understanding all the capabilities of Premiere and After Effects. It's endless. Every little setting can be tweaked. Every tiny little feature is customizable throughout the entire program. And Adobe doesn't really care about making your experience user friendly. They just want to make sure you have as many options as possible. Which is why when people first look at Premiere, they're usually pretty intimidated. If they've never seen it before, it's scary. I remember the first time I opened Premiere, I just <laughs> and I got used to it, and now I'm just I'm natural with it. You can hook up Adobe projects to different servers and have multiple people editing on one project. You can save that file, share it to someone else with a PC, and they can continue editing that project. It's very, very friendly when it comes to multiple people working together. You can have footage on various computers and import them into your project because you don't have to import footage into the program directly. Different story with Final Cut. And Adobe allows you to activate very specific parts of your computer in the settings to make sure it's using exactly what you want it to use, which is really handy for advanced filmmaking because they do use Adobe Premiere and after Effects to make feature length films. And because the export settings within Premiere are so infinite, there are literally some presets they use to make feature films with. And the amount of options you get when you're exporting in Premiere is literally endless. That means it doesn't matter how long my video is, if I want it to be 2.56 gigabytes, I can set that since they have a bitrate slider. If I want my three minute video to be over 100 gigabytes, I can make that happen. I can make that happen, although it'll take a long time to export, that's an option for me. And if I want it to be 300 megabytes, I can make that happen, although it'll look like crap. And if I make it over 100 gigabytes, it'll look really, really good, but it'll take a long time to export. Bottom line is when you're exporting in Premiere, there's no limit to how many options you have. Adobe is like flying a spacecraft, where Final Cut is more like flying an airplane. Apple definitely took into consideration user friendliness when they were designing Final Cut. They didn't want you to be that scared when you first use it. Premiere is all about options. Final Cut is more about ease. They do this in several ways. Like for instance, the biggest, most obvious one when people are switching between between Premiere and Final Cut is a magnetic timeline. This means that when you're building things in Final Cut, you can't have space between two clips. As soon as you drag something in, it collapses and they stick together, making things a bit more user-friendly because you don't have to drag everything together and stay close. But if you're a professional filmmaker, sometimes you kind of want that black space. So you have more room to push footage out here when you're working on it, edit it out there, and then when you're done, you can move it back in rather than have everything sticking together no matter what. Again, that varies depending on what kind of movie you're making. So having that magnetic timeline can be very helpful or extremely annoying. So again, for professional creators, having that extra space without the magnetic timeline where you can just drag things out as long as you need to and bring them back in later, that's handy. But Apple is looking at Final Cut and saying most people don't want a whole bunch of space in between the clips. So just collapse everything together and make it stick. So most people are okay with that. Now what you do get with Final Cut is Apple optimization. And I think this is the strongest perk Final Cut has over Premiere. When I edit in Premiere, 
Premiere, especially when I'm trying to edit 4K footage, sometimes it just crashes, the fans in my 15-inch MacBook Pro get very, very loud, especially when exporting, and the battery life is shrunken to one hour during exporting, and two to three while editing a video. Not that great, you better have your power source nearby. But with Final Cut, even when I'm editing with 4K footage, fans never get that loud, and the computer doesn't even get that hot. Even when I'm exporting 4K video, it doesn't get that bad. Also, exporting times in Final Cut are drastically shorter than in Premiere. Something that takes 20 minutes in Premiere takes about five minutes in Final Cut. The trade-off is, with Final Cut, you have very limited options for exporting, unless you buy another program called Compressor, which opens up more doors, but if you're just using Final Cut Pro, you are essentially limited to what Apple gives you, which is not very much. It's a couple formats, but there's nothing much to customize with. I mean, the video quality that Final Cut gives you isn't that bad. Obviously, the last couple of videos on this channel were edited with Final Cut. No one has been complaining about a quality drop, so if there is a drop in quality, it's not something you guys deem worth mentioning, so must not be that bad. The other user-friendly feature, though, with Final Cut is while you're exporting, you can still edit videos. While in Premiere, when you hit export, you cannot really access the rest of the program until you're done exporting. Unless you use another program called Media Encoder, and you can send it to that, and it'll export from there. And then you can go back to Premiere and continue editing whatever projects you need to look at. However, if you send it to Media Encoder and go back to Premiere, your computer is going to be blazing hot. Those fans are really going to kick in, and if you're on a 2016 MacBook Pro, even if you're on a 5K iMac, you're going to hear those fans kick in if you're using both of those programs. It's very hard on the computer. And if you don't have a Mac, I don't know why you're watching this, because you can't use Final Cut Pro, so your option is Premiere. Go with that. The thing Final Cut is not friendly about is storage, because everything you want to edit has to be imported again into the program after you've already imported it onto the computer itself. Because what Final Cut does that makes it so easy for you to view 4K and export is render footage in the background, something Premiere doesn't do. This means that when you drag all of your footage onto the computer and you have it in a folder and say, there's my project, in order to edit it, you have to import it again into Final Cut by dragging it in or going through the import process through Final Cut. Which, for example, means if you have 50 gigabytes of footage that you recorded for the day, you need 100 gigabytes of free space in order to edit that. Which can be tough for some people, including me. If you're editing tons and tons of 4K footage and you're limited to a 256 gigabyte hard drive, as many of us MacBook users are, you're going to run into some space problems that you wouldn't have if you were using Premiere. So as you can see now, both are really good, but in different ways. They are meant for very different types of editors. Premiere works on both Macs and PCs and can help you specifically edit any type of video, even highly advanced professional grade footage that they used in Hollywood. Premiere can edit that. And Final Cut is really great at enabling your Mac to have full potential when editing footage that you're doing. And that's, and that's really more for YouTubers and mild professional filmmakers who aren't in the industry, but they do this for a job. As in a 12 inch MacBook, that thing that has a phone processor can edit 4K footage with Final Cut, but definitely not Premiere. Which is crazy that just a little bit of source code can mean all the difference. So while I do refuse to say that both of these programs are equal, I'm gonna go with Final Cut because I'm an Apple sheep. Final Cut lets me use the touch bar, something I can't do with Premiere and I don't know why. Adobe is okay with using the touch bar on Photoshop, but not Premiere yet, and I haven't figured out why they're against that. And Premiere often still crashes when I try to edit 4K video on that. On a very current high-end MacBook Pro, obviously it's possible to edit 4K because Final Cut has absolutely no problem, which just means Adobe's optimization for the MacBook Pro is so out of whack that Adobe's not letting that happen, basically forcing us to use Final Final Cut. Adobe, you're really missing out. I'd really love to stick with you. But the features we get on the touch bar, like zooming in and out on the timeline, being able to scrub your volume for the music just right, just to the right decibel rating, just from the touch bar, being able to trim clips very quickly, that in my book has been way more useful than anything Premiere has provided. And my Mac doesn't get hot or lose battery as fast when I'm using Final Cut. So because of my Apple ecosystem, I'm going to have to say Final Cut Pro is the better buy. It does a great job, and I'm likely to stick with that when I'm editing most of my tech videos like this one. I still have Premiere. I'm still going to use it for certain types of jobs, especially the ones I need to save storage on. Like when I edit a Talos of Talks podcast, that's a lot of footage and I don't want to have to double that. I don't even know if my hard drive can handle it. So reserve Premiere for certain things, but Final Cut for day to day. So there's your answer. I've been converted to the Final Cut realm. Are you happy? Honestly, not that big of a surprise. What's the Apple Sheep? So that's, that's likely, right? Anyway, this is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.